There's one flying over there. See him? See that pattern on his wings there? That black bar, and then he's got that grayish white underneath there. An eagle's wings will be all solid black underneath. There won't be no grayish underneath there. Tell you what, let's freeze the video here and you can have a close look. There now you can see. Very beautiful thing to see when they're close up. But that's one way you can tell that it's a turkey vulture and not an eagle or something. Still another way to tell, a turkey vulture will have his wings up in a shallow V like this. He won't have them straight across like other birds. He'll have them just tilted up just a little bit. Man, there's a whole bunch of them up there now. But if you watch them, you'll see that they all got their wings up in that V like that. Another way to know it's a turkey vulture, see how he rocks from side to side like that? Any other bird won't do that, he'll just fly straight. And just like that, very typical of a vulture flight. Very graceful in flight, these birds. I love to just watch these birds. I could sit here all day and just watch them fly around up there. When you see a whole bunch of vultures flying together in a group, it's called a kettle of vultures, not a flock of vultures. Besides that, a vulture's immune system works nine times faster than ours, all right? So a human, we catch a cold or a virus or something, it takes us about four days to get it and get over it. A vulture, he'll do that in 11 to 12 hours. You notice they never seem to flap their wings that's because they ride thermal updrafts. A thermal updraft is when you have the cool night air, then in the morning the sun comes out and heats the ground, and that warm air rising up from the warm ground creates a thermal updraft. We call them thermals for short. The vulture can sit on these thermals and never have to flap his wings, and a rising current of warm air is strong enough to hold him up and even lift him up higher for more altitude if he needs to. And when he's done searching this immediate area for food, right here, all he has to do is ride that thermal higher and higher till he has enough altitude. He can glide over the trees over to the next thermal and he can start to ride that one and sit on top of that one and look for food. They're very graceful in flight. Just to watch these birds fly around is a lot of fun. They're like the blue angels with feathers. A turkey vulture's sense of smell is absolutely one of the best you'll find anywhere in the animal kingdom. They use that sense of smell when they're flying around way up there to locate and sniff out dead animals to eat. Now not only can they smell him, but they can also see him because their eyesight is a lot better than ours. Their eyesight is excellent. They see a lot more detail than we do. I guess you could say the way we see things is like regular TV and the way he sees things is like high definition TV. Everything a vulture sees is in high definition. That would be cool to be able to see like that. High definition world all the time. The way that works is in any animal's eyes, you'll find these light receptors. The more of these light receptors you have in your eyes, the more detail you see things in. It's kind of like the megapixels in your camera. The more little dots you have for every square inch, the more detail you see. Now, if I have a square of this size and I only have four dots in there, we're not going to see too much detail. But if I put 
thousands of little dots in there. We're going to see everything crystal clear and in perfect detail. And that's the way the vulture sees everything, high definition TV. Look, look, he's landing, he's landing. Here he comes. Yeah, he landed in that tree over there. Hey, there's another one sitting over there. See him? Yeah, he's just sitting there relaxing. I'll tell you, a vulture is very good at relaxing. Relaxing is something a vulture does very, very well. <laughs> this is a bird who knows how to just chill out and hang out and be cool. Not a real energy spender, huh? It's pretty clear that he just likes to just sit there and chill out. The act of sitting in a tree like that for a vulture is called roosting. And it's very rare to actually see vultures roosting. That's all great, but I want to get a closer look at him, and I think I know a pretty good way we can do that. But around 11 a.m., this is when the thermal updrafts get started. And uh, that's when they take to the air. And they get started in their search for food. While we're waiting, there's lots of other animals that we can watch. There's a blue jay out there. food, 
there may be predators around, so he's got to be extra careful to check the place out. Make sure there's no danger down there before he flies down there to eat. south these guys have a relative called the black vulture. Now the black vulture, his sense of smell is not as good as a turkey vulture's and it's been said the black vulture likes to watch for turkey vultures and then follow them to a dead carcass. When the turkey vulture gets down there his beak is not as sharp as strong as the black vultures so he'll wait for the black vulture to come and open the hide so he can eat as well. I guess you could call that teamwork. sense of smell. You see how you can see through one nostril and out the other on the vulture. There's not so much as a membrane or a flap of skin in between the two nostrils. I know some people that have the same thing, except that it's with their ears.
it's just too acidic. You don't have to worry about them ever spreading disease. It's just too acidic. Nothing can live in it. Human poop, on the other hand, is full of bacteria. Hepatitis, E. coli, cold, flu, measles, mumps, chicken pox, all that stuff. Any disease you ever caught, you caught it from another human. The vulture, he had nothing to do with it. See how he's shoving his head down inside the chest cavity like that? That's why they evolved the bald head. When you shove your head down inside of a dead animal every day, you want to have as few feathers on your head as possible. Because if you had feathers, that would hold the moisture, causing fungus, itchy mold, mildew, all kinds of stuff. Who needs it? It's better to be bald so that the moisture can evaporate allowing fewer diseases on your head. Scientists don't quite agree on that yet. Some say it's to ward off the predator. Stomach acid in the face, in the eyes, you know, you'll get the message. Some others say that it's to uh, vomit up a few scraps of meat so that the predator will eat that and leave the vulture alone to eat in peace. So 
some others say that it's because he's eaten too much already and he's too heavy. He can't fly away to escape the predator. So he vomits up a few scraps of meat. This way he's a little bit lighter and he can get off the ground and fly away easier to get to safety. Now this much I know for sure, the vulture is not a street fighter. I've never seen them stay and defend anything. Here comes another one. And another one. you'll ever see from a turkey vulture. The more aggressive bird always eats first. One dominates, the other one backs off. That's about all there is for aggression among these birds. Man, vultures have the most beautiful wings when they open their wings like that. They sit with their wings open like that so the sun can shine on his back and help to warm up his body temperature. Vultures, like other birds, have their body temperatures at about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. This is actually one of the many reasons that they can fly. Because of their warm body temperature, chemical changes take place in their muscles faster so they can generate more power and they can generate more lift and get off the ground easier. That's one of the reasons that the birds are able to fly.
there he goes. They're missing at each other. <sighs> That's pretty much it for sound for them. There's no chirping, no singing. Just hissing as a warning and grunting during courtship. That's about it. To give you some kind of an idea about how big this bird is, I'm gonna stretch my arms out like this. I'm about a five eight, five foot eight guy. So with this camera overlay here, we take these two pictures and we overlay them just like this. And you can get a good idea how big this bird actually is and how big their wingspan is. The vulture, he's actually about three pounds, but he can get to be about five and a half pounds. You wouldn't believe the smell of this, oh man. Another dead raccoon over there, and it smells like, oh man, that one's full of maggots. Even the vultures won't eat that. And the flies are just unre... <coughs> the fly just went down my throat. This stinks, man. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get away from here.
but uh, we gotta move on. There's a lot to do today. There's a little swampy area down that way, about a mile upstream. And uh, there's a couple of wood ducks in there. If you've never seen a wood duck, a wood duck is a beautiful duck species. And I wanna show you that today as well. Let's get going. <laughs> 